What if we didn't need driver's licenses? As of this recording, it's the year 2022, and any person who wishes to operate a motor vehicle in the United States, or really anywhere in the world, at some point is required to have some version of this, right? But why do we need driver's licenses? It's the year 1903, Massachusetts and Missouri became two of the first states to require drivers to have a license. This was about 17 years after the first modern car was created by German inventor Carl Benz in 1886. But getting your license was barely a problem at this time because these states didn't even require you to take an exam. That is until 1920 when several other states were already following suit issuing licenses and Massachusetts had required all drivers to take a test to obtain one. So only 24 states required licenses to drive by 1930, and of those 24, 15 required an exam. Car culture was booming at this time. People could travel from point A to point B quicker with their families and in style in a nice new ride, right? To go in during the summer vacations, oh, it was amazing. But quickly, cities and governments started to realize that as the popularity of driving grew, more and more vehicles would be on the road, which means they need to educate more and more people about traffic rules and regulations and how to operate a motor vehicle at a younger age. Driver's education was basically a required class every student had to take in high school from the 1930s to the early 2000s for the most part. Personally, my school never had a driver's ed program, but I remember watching shows like Saved by the Bell where they had a whole classroom and they would have this like golf cart thing that they would drive around the school to practice their skills. Some schools even had actual cars for students to drive in on the back lots. Now, I thought that was pretty cool. It was basically expected that when you turn 16, you would be driving, getting a car, and getting a job to help the family. Or you're taking your girlfriend, Betty Lou, to point Pete to make out, right? <laughs> I mean, if not, then you were kind of seen as a loser. Especially in the movies at this time. But in the 2000s, when driver education courses started being eliminated nationwide, the responsibility of learning to drive fell onto the parents. It opened up the opportunity also for some private companies to teach your kid how to drive for a nominal fee, right? With no driver's education being required or being provided for free to students, who is going to teach these people and how many of these young people are going to be able to drive when they turn 16? In 1972, the U.S. Federal Highway Administration found that over 56% of people between the ages of 16 and 19 had their driver's license. A similar study was done by Hedges & Company, an automotive digital marketing and research agency, in 2019. They found that just 34.8% of people between the same age group, 16 and 19, had a driver's license. The decline has to be due to the decrease in publicly available driving courses and, and the price of cars, of course, because when you turn 16, even if you have a license, you what if you can't afford a car? I mean, what's the point of getting a license if you can't drive, right? Of course, increased fees and responsibility, and plus, we have rideshare now. More and more people we see are utilizing public transportation options to get around the city and commute back and forth between work. I mean, younger people are also utilizing new rideshare companies that become more prominent within the last eight years. Now, I'm sure at least one of you has rode in either a Uber or a Lyft or a Waymo or something, right? Public transportation is way more accessible for a lot of people. You pay one time, you don't have to worry about gas, you don't have to worry about an accident for the most part, and you're not liable for anything. And as you're traveling, you get to finish up some work, you can be on your phone, you can take a nap. <laughs> it's little stuff like that. Anything you want to do. And the same applies to rideshare, right? If you need to go somewhere, you just pay for the trip. You ride in the back seat, you do your own thing, and the driver takes you there, and when they wake you up, you're already at your building, right? So now people like me, what the license is going to say, oh, but having your own car is so convenient. You can leave when you want to, you can come where you want to, go wherever you want, however often you want, and you have something you own. But a lot of people are forgetting about the only a car part. Even if you fully own your car, you're making payments. You're making payments to something. The average car payment is between $500 and $660 a month in the United States. And that's not even including regular scheduled maintenance like oil changes, tire rotations, getting new tires, anything that breaks in the car. And that's not including insurance, which is required in a lot of states. And that's not including gas. And if you've seen gas prices, <laughs> you can't forget that. Easily, you're looking at $1,000 a month, even if you have one of those cool electric cars. Hmm. Electric cars. Electric cars are pretty cool, right? 
I mean, with the prominence of Tesla introducing all electric cars that actually really looked cool and pushed the bounds of what technology could do, other companies have obviously followed suit, not only implementing electric cars into their lineup, but implementing the technology Tesla has and is still working on creating. So what is this technology I'm referring to? Introduced in 2014, Autopilot has paved the way for where cars are headed. Semi-autonomous smart cars that can detect highway lanes, detect other cars in front of it, on the side of it, behind it, brake automatically if needed, and steer within the lane as long as the driver is paying attention, of course. This really pushed other manufacturers to figure out how to implement some part of this technology in their cars. Not only because it's cool, I mean, it is cool, right? But because it's safe. It's safer. And probably because they could charge more for the cars. <laughs> cars have slowly started adding emergency braking for vehicle and pedestrians and blind spot detection. Then we started seeing a wave of cross traffic detection and rear braking, lane detection and intervention. I mean, my car, I have a Nissan, right? And it literally will vibrate the steering wheel if you get too far on the left, too far on the right, cross the line or something like that. And um, cars can even have cruise control where it'll slow down and speed up as traffic speeds up and slows down, right? Which is perfect for me driving through Atlanta on 285. And now a feature I have experienced with my own car as well is uh it will steer for you to some extent uh it varies from car to car some will require you to have your hands on the steering wheel like mine and some will require you to look at the road at all times like gm's vehicles with the super cruise feature right basically you use pre-mapped highways and uh these special cameras that make sure you're paying attention to the road at all times and then as long as you're doing that it'll drive it'll change lanes for you you're all good i mean these cars can practically park themselves nowadays they can come find you and pick you up and then give you a ride wherever you need to go i know the technology might not be a hundred percent there right now but give it five years give it give it ten years I mean, that's really by the time when my kids are gonna start having their own licenses. It'll be close to perfect. And people love these features. You know they do. You love these features. Buying a car that can drive you wherever you want while you get to relax as much as possible. Oh, it makes driving on road trips a breeze, I can't tell you enough. And you get to enjoy the views and entertain your family. Some people even like to watch videos. <laughs> Something about that seems familiar. It's almost like the more technology that advances, the more we go from an active, active driver to an active, passive driver, where we are now, and soon we'll be passive, passive drivers, where cars will be able to drive themselves anywhere we want to. And if you feel like it, I mean, you could drive them <laughs> if you want to, but for the most part, you're just picking out the car you want to be chauffeured in. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's like an Uber minus a stranger in the driver's seat, and instead of a stranger you're stuck with, Oh, what, an NVIDIA 3090? <laughs> so get back to my original point. You will not need a license in the future. I theorize that how just a few people have licenses to fly, driving cars will be seen as a cool skill to have. Like people who drive manual cars. Why would you need a license when your car can handle 90 to 100% of all the situations it encounters, as long as it gets you from point A to point B reliably? There really isn't a need to drive your own car. Which also makes me think about 16, the age you have to be to drive a car in the United States, right? Or to get a license. If the cars can drive themselves, theoretically, it really doesn't matter if you're 16 or not. I mean, heck, you could be five years old as long as you can afford your own car. But I think five years old is a bit of a push. Let's say, realistically, you could be 14 as long as you can afford a car. It has the same features of any other car. I mean, you could drive, quote unquote, drive, right? As long as that car does the same things a 35 year old person's car does, there's really no difference. And that's what creates an even playing field. So what about trucks? Big trucks, 18 wheelers, semi trucks and trailers. Those things not only require a regular license, but some kind of CDL or certificate to certify that you are competent to operate these larger vehicles. I see semi trucks fitting in the same category as airplanes, cargo planes, and cargo boats, right? You'll still need a license to operate these vehicles. However, the information and assistance features in these vehicles will make your job a heck of a lot easier. Rear view cameras to see past your trailer, making sure that even if the driver does fall asleep at the wheel, the vehicle can stay in its lane, slow, safely slow down if need be and uh yeah of course there's always room for improvement in truck technology and advancements but my big point is that passenger cars are very close to driving themselves and because of that you may not be required to have a license to drive them 
Now, if I had a Porsche Taycan, you know, I'd be driving that thing all day. Oh, trust me. That thing is so fun to drive. It really is. Uh, I did a test drive at the Porsche Experience Center, and um, it is for sure one of my favorite cars. So sports cars are probably safe. <laughs> and uh, maybe I should hold on to my license a little bit longer just in case I get one. If you like this video and stick to the end, I really appreciate that. And uh, hopefully I can continue to provide and make more videos like this in the future. I hope you'll subscribe and uh, leave a comment. And I'll see you guys later.